thank you all for joining me on this broadcast. And uh, I also want to do a special thanks to Town Meeting TV for making this possible. Today's topic of discussion is the emancipation status of uh, Afro-Americans. Now, as we know, uh, based on the Emancipation Proclamation that was signed by Abraham Lincoln, we are apparently very much free as of June 19, 1865. Now, this is what has been told to us, and this is what is recorded in history. But now, what we have to do is reflect on whether or not that is the truth. Now, I can say personally, myself, I'm free. I can say that. But then we have to look at my economic status. We have to look at my social status. We have to look at my political status. And that would really determine whether or not I'm really free. So based on the data, which do not lie, black people actually are the poorest people in America. Based on the data, it appears that black people have zero political power here in America. There is no political party that represents black America. Based on the data, black people are still oppressed in all factions of this government. Now, that does not appear like a free people. A free people should have some sort of economic power. Their economic state should be comparable to those who are also living here in America. And based on the data, it appears that black people definitely are nowhere near the economic status of the, their uh, white counterparts and those such as um, the Native Americans and um, other people who are uh, the Hispanics and so on and so forth. They are below all those individuals. And also, our educational status is not something that is uh, at the same level as everybody else. We are actually one of the most illiterate people here in America. Now, if we were free, then of course that would mean we would have access to education. So we would not be illiterate. We would not be poor. We would have some sort of political power. And things should be as it should be for any other American citizen. But the reality is the opposite. Now, there's no point in talking about a nation for black people if we are free. And that's why we are using this emancipation to determine whether or not there's even a reason for us to establish a nation for black America. If we are already free, then we should just coexist with everybody else over here. But this government here in America is not representing us. It's not advocating for us, and it does not perceive us as her own. Ever since we have been so-called free, we are victims of police brutality. We are victims of lynching. We are victims of, obviously, our origin. We came through ships, slavery, and there has never been any sort of reconciliation for that. There is no reparation for us. Every other people, including Native Americans, have been given some sort of reparation. Where is our reparation? How are we supposed to catch up? How are we supposed to just naturally catch up when everything around us is going against us? Yet we're just supposed to catch up as any other free people, even though we know the system is built to go against us. It is not built for us. Now, of course, as we know, America has a history of fighting for liberty. It was actually said by Patrick Henry, in 1775, he said the following famous quote, give me liberty or give me death. That's what he said. And why did he say that? He said that because America were actually being, Americans were being oppressed. The 13 colonies were actually uh, being oppressed. There was taxation without political representation. We as black Americans do not have political representation here and we're being taxed. How are you going to tax a people who can't even represent themselves politically? How are you going to tax them? There's no one who's fighting for our best interests politically here in America. Yet we're being taxed as other people who are actually being politically represented. This does not make any sense. So he said, give me liberty or give me death. That's what he said. This is one of the founding fathers of America. And rightfully so. Any people who are being oppressed should try to separate themselves from people who are oppressing them. Great Britain was oppressing America, the 13 colonies. And so it was only right for them to separate from them, just as any other people who are being uh, oppressed should separate from the people who are oppressing them. 
black America never separated for those who are oppressing them. And so what? Are we now supposed to assume that our conditions should change? Even though this obvious thing did not happen, we're supposed to assume our conditions can change. No, your conditions will only change the moment you separate from the people who are putting you in an oppressive condition. We haven't separated from those people who are oppressing us. And that's why they continue on to oppress us. And that's why we don't have any political power. And that's why we are the poorest people. And that's why we are always misrepresented. That's why it's happening. So after he said that, quote, it was inevitable. America was going to be free. It was just a matter of time. Now, we always talk about, well, you know, black people, they're about 50, uh, 50 million strong here in America. They're definitely outnumbered. But so was America. America was completely outnumbered. They were about to face what? The most powerful nation in the world at that time. One of the most powerful, if not the most powerful nation at that time. Yet, they still won. How did they win? They were outnumbered, outweaponed. There was no way. If you looked at the, the stats, it looks like they were going to definitely lose. But they still won. It was because of perseverance. Of course, they were also helped by France. <clears throat> but I'm not going to downplay the fact that they were not going to settle for anything else but freedom. Even if France did not help them, I believe that America was still going to be free. Why? Because they were not willing to settle for anything else but complete freedom. And I, like America, like the Founding Fathers, am not going to settle for anything but complete freedom for black America. And based on the way things are right now, we are nowhere near it. We're not even progressing. People think we're progressing. We're not progressing. If anything, we are digressing. We're, we're going, we're going, uh, we're digressing. We're going downhill, actually. And we are also partially to blame for this, to be honest. We're partially to blame because we're not doing anything about our conditions. And every leader that we try to have fighting for us, what happens to him? He's either assassinated, undermined. The U.S. government directly targets our leaders, yet we're still supposed to believe that this government cares about us, right? After you assassinate our leaders. All of our major leaders were either assassinated or they were undermined. All of them by the same system of government that says that they are also for all of us. All of us. All of us does not seem like it's true, especially considering the fact that we are not represented in that. And that's simply why I'm fighting to have a state for black Americans, <clears throat> because I believe that's the only way they will be free. And at that point, black America can no longer complain. They can no longer say somebody did this to us. They can no, no longer play the victim. And I think this is actually a good thing. I think this is a good thing because at that point in which we can no longer complain, then white America doesn't have to worry about us. We will take care of ourselves. Is that not a good thing? Is it not a good thing for one to be self-sufficient? When you have a child, wouldn't you want your child to eventually be self-sufficient or would you want him to live inside your house until he's an old man? No, you would want your child to eventually be self-sufficient and to provide for itself. That's what you would want. America is that household right there that we live in as black Americans. And there is domestic violence involved. Yet, like most victims of domestic violence, we are not leaving. We don't want to separate from our conditions. We are inside of a situation where we know we're being oppressed, yet we still stay saying we are Americans. You're not an American. If you were an American, you wouldn't be the poorest people. You would have at least one political party that represents, and don't even, no, the Democratic Party does not support us. It only exploits our votes. The Republican Party does not support us. It does the same thing, except it's a little bit more direct about it. None of those political parties represent black America. One is just exploiting the black vote. That's it. That's it. And even if you put a black man as the president in America, he still cannot do nothing for black Americans. Why? Because it's not about the position. It's about the system. It's about the system. America has a system that will never yield actual freedom for black people. And it has no intention of doing so. America right now, as we stand right now, it has no intention of creating 
a black society that is self-sufficient, that is aware of its identity, and that can provide for itself. It's not. And if it is, where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? We are not, we're not able to be self-sufficient over here in America. That's why there's all these government assistance. And these government assistance are not benefiting us, actually. They're intended to make us dependent on it. Uh, these d governmental uh, uh, assistance, they're only supposed to symbolically help us. They don't really help us. Because the moment in which we start making more money, they cut it off. And we became so dependent on it that we would actually rather get a job that pays less so we can keep it. That call, that's called dependency. You're not helping the person. It, it's not helping anybody. It's, it's not even helping white America. People who are on government assistance will remain on government assistance because it's a dependency. It's not, helped, it's, it's not created to help someone progress. The only way that we will actually be a society that will be self-sufficient, that's powerful enough, is if we separate from those people who are oppressing us right now. Now, I can share my opinion about whether or not this is true, but the data says the same thing. We are being oppressed here in America. It's, the, it's a fact. And if, you, if someone says otherwise, then where's the data? Where's the data that says that we have the same conditions and the same realities as white Americans? People who actually come from other places, they come over here in America, and they have better, actually, lifestyle than us. We've been here longer than them, yet they still have a better reality than us. How does that happen? How does that happen? We have to be honest with ourselves here as black Americans. We think that white America is eventually going to give us some sort of freedom here. But history does not lie. No oppressed people were given freedom. The only way that they, be that they became free was by fighting. And if black America does not want to fight for freedom, then they should not even be thinking about freedom because they don't deserve it. No one who's not willing to fight for freedom deserves freedom at all because it's an act. Freedom is something that you have to pay a price, uh, a price for. If you're not willing to pay the price for it, then, of course, why are you even talking about it? Now, I also have to mention that Actually, today, we were supposed to have two other individuals here. And this was supposed to be a dialogue where I would be talking with other individuals. Unfortunately, they were not able to make it. But we're talking about 50 million people over here. I must continue on and do what I have to do for my people. I must continue. And that's why I improvise, and I'm the one that's actually answering the questions. But the question is, the answer to the question is very obvious. Are we em emancipated? Absolutely not. We're not emancipated at all. Why are so many black boys being raised without their fathers if we are emancipated? Why are their fathers rotting in jail if we are emancipated? Then we wonder why the black boy cannot be functional within the society, because he only grow grows up with his mom. You need both a mom and a dad. A dad himself cannot raise a, a functional uh, a kid. A mom herself cannot either. Both have to be present. That would increase the likelihood of that kid becoming a functional human being within a society. Every time we commit a crime, we are having to face higher repercussion for that same crime that another person who's not black would commit. We would have to be in jail longer. Why is that happening? If we are Americans, why is that happening? Why are we not getting the same treatment as everybody else? You see, as a Muslim, I believe all human beings are created equally. I don't believe I'm greater than anybody. I don't believe I'm more superior than anybody. I believe all of mankind is created equally. And because of that reason, I am completely against anybody who thinks they are greater based on their skin color. I believe as a Muslim that we all came from Adam, one origin. That's what I believe. I believe we all came from Adam. So we all have one origin. But then how do we get to a point where now one thinks he's more superior than the other? It's greed. It's resources. It's animosity. 
That's how we got to where we are today. So of course, in the process of fighting for my people, I cannot be the same devil that I'm fighting. Of course not. Of course not. So I would have to conclude by saying this. We can continue on relying on the mercy of others. We can keep begging them to give us something. We can keep expecting them to give us their crumbs so we can get on our knees and eat it. We can keep doing that as black Americans. It appears that that's how we, what we've been doing this whole time. Now, I'm not going to downplay anybody else who were fighting for us, Malcolm X, MLK, Rosa Parks, all these individuals did fight for us. But why were they not able to get us to where we need to be? And what, and what I mean by where we need to be is absolute freedom. We're not free. And the reason why we are not where we need to be, uh, in spite of those people who fought for us, is because I believe that we're not ready. I don't think we're ready for what we need to do in order for us to become free. The price that we have to pay to become free. Those people fought. Some of them died for us. Yet we're not free. Why are we not free? Because we didn't support them. We didn't believe in that same mission that they were fighting for. Now, what do I believe? Am I going to be the same? Certainly, as a Muslim, I'm already free. I was born free. As a Muslim, there's nothing that this world can offer me that is complete. I don't even care if I get a nation for black Americans here. As a Muslim, that's nothing for me. That's nothing for me. For me, what my objective is, is to free my people both on this earth and in the hereafter. And that's all comes back down to moral values. We have to be better than others. We have to. Morally, we have to be better. I'm not talking about no superiority complex here. I'm talking about having values. Values that make you a person who's better than the other. Because it's clear that other people will prioritize their selfish interest. It's very clear that they're doing that. We cannot be the same way. But we also have to be realistic here. We're talking about our future. We need a nation for ourselves. We need a nation for ourselves. So that we can try to dictate what our destiny is going to be. Maybe some of us may become of a particular religious uh, group. Some of us may become of a, a particular preference uh, and profession, but that is you dictating and controlling your own destiny. We don't even have the ability to control our destiny. So that's really what I'm fighting for here. I'm fighting for black Americans right to determine their own destiny that all of mankind is entitled to. That's what I'm fighting for. Thank you all for joining me, and until next time, we will keep fighting.